Good evening, everybody. If you will, grab your hymnal, turn to page number 113. Page number 113. Glory to his name. Page 113. How many of you glad to be in the Lord's house tonight? Say amen. Amen. How many of you are glad that Jesus still saves? How many of you are glad that he's met with you today? How many of you glad he's the dearest friend you'll ever have? Amen. Sing page number 113 with us tonight, please. Glory to his name. Sing there with us on the first verse. Down at the cross. Down at the cross where my Savior died Down where for cleansing from sin I cried And there to my heart was the blood of life Glory to His name And glory to His name Glory to His name Come on in and fill up the choir tonight.
music's great, guys. Appreciate that so much. And girls, I saw Summer over there. Yeah, good. Welcome to Canaan Baptist. We're excited you're here. We're excited that God's here, and I'm excited about what he's going to do for us. Welcome. We appreciate you coming. Uh, it is our normal Wednesday night service, also uh, included with Jubilee, so it's a ref it's uh, after we have some music, it's usually our practice here to gather around the altar and have prayer, so we'll be doing that in just a few moments. Now, for those of you who are planning to come tomorrow morning session, uh, Dr. Gillum is here, and he'll be teaching for us, and then also Dr. Bagwell is driving in tonight from Tennessee. Now, Dr. Bagwell wants you to do this, if you will. If you're coming tomorrow morning, he wants you to read the chapter 11 of John, John chapter 11. He wants you to read it through. And he also said, if you will read it through at least five times between Thursday morning and Friday morning, he's got a gift for you. So he wants you to read tonight, those of you coming for the morning session, John chapter 11, if you will please, at least once all the way through. All right, let's have some music and then we'll pray together around the altar.
I can't follow cute, I can't. <laughs>
about as the choir comes down let's just find our places around the altar those of you who care to come or you're able to come please come kneel around the altar for our time of prayer it's okay to pray from where you are but around here at Canaan with as many of us as can we join around the altar so come on down if you can if you will have our prayer time Father, we're so grateful to you for the time that we could share together tonight. Lord, we think back through the day how you awakened us from our sleep. You gave us health and strength to be up and about. You gave us so much mercy and grace. Things could have happened that didn't. Lord, you've been so good to us. We were able to see the sunshine and hear the voice of children. Lord, we had our senses. We could eat and we could to the things we needed to do about our daily duties. You've been so kind. And Lord, when we look toward the cross, we think of your extreme kindness, your love, your grace, your mercy, that you would love sinners like us and give your life, shed your blood so that we could be saved. Oh, you're a loving God. And Lord, we thank you for the blessings you've given us, a home to go to, a church to attend, and services where we could just worship you and praise and spirit and truth. Lord, I pray that this meeting tonight will be a blessing to those who come this way. And Lord, that you'd get the glory for many things sung or said or played on an instrument, that you'd anoint the preacher, that he'd give us your word, and that your word would find its lodging place in our heart. Let us not be just good hearers, but good doers of your word. Lord, we pray for the sick and the afflicted within our body here, this assembly. Lord, we pray for those outside of these four walls who couldn't be here, Lord. And you know the situation. You know their body. We pray for healing where healing is granted. Lord, we pray for mercy and grace. Perhaps there's a, a marriage that's on the rock or a wayward child or someone's son or daughter is incarcerated. Maybe there's someone fighting an addiction to pornography or drugs or alcoholism. God, you're aware of all these things, and we bring them before you. We ask for you to work those things out. Lord, convict us of our sin. Show us where we're wrong so that we can repent, where we can ask your forgiveness and be restored and reconciliation. Lord, we love you. So you take this service, use it to your glory. We're going to thank you ahead of time for all this accomplished in Jesus' name.
It's time for preaching. Amen. All right. Uh, welcome the uh, folks all the way down from Concord. Uh, Miss Pam's brother David is the uh, Wilmar, Park. Wilmar Park. Couldn't get it. Thank you for helping me there. Wilmar Park. Uh, brother David Wilson's there, and uh, they moved their service with us tonight. We appreciate all the folks from Wilmar. And others of you visiting, we appreciate you here too. Doctor, come on. It's no, uh, Brother Dean is no stranger to us here. I think this is about our 19th year together, and uh, it's always a blessing when he comes around Salisbury. Uh, he split my church three different times. <laughs> Amen. But we, we're still on target, brother. Still worshiping. 
I'm playing with you. I love this man, one of my dear friends. Appreciate Dr. Dean McNeese from over in the Ringgold, Georgia area. been good to us I bless the Lord I'm going to do what I've done last night I'm going to get everybody to move down you can't get in this section it's full you about can't get in this I want all of y'all to come all the way down as far as you can we've done this last night we're having prayer meeting they told me to get the church ready for Jubilee everybody stand up and everybody come down Last one in is a rotten egg. <laughs> we got a whole pew right here. If somebody wants to come down here. And we got a whole pew right here. I appreciate you letting me do this. Y'all come on in. Hey, folks. Good to see you. We had breakfast together, didn't we? <laughs> hey, that ain't far enough. Get up. Come down. Brother Roger, if I was wearing a shirt that color, I'd come all the way to the front. <laughs> Y'all come all the way down and help me. I appreciate it. We did this last night. Yeah. What we're going to have to do in the South in 2018... We're going to have to have revival. Amen. We can't play church. Right, right. If I'm going to leave my little family this week, I ain't playing tiddlywinks with a bunch of dead Baptists. Right. Y'all talk to me. Right. Talk to me. We're going to have to have revival. And in America, God's so big, I don't care where you at and where you ain't, God's big enough to breathe on his church. <laughs> I have no problem with believing that. And I feel like exhorting tonight. I'm going to obey the Lord. I had two or three messages on my heart, so I'm going to preach all of them. <laughs> the condensed version of each one. Yes, sir. Lord, we thank you for Calvary. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the Holy Ghost. We thank you for Brother Bruce and Sister Pam, how precious they've been to us through these years. Thank you, Lord, for Jared and Bethany and how they've stayed with God. And what it's meant to this church that these youngins have done what most youngins don't. They've stayed with God. Lord, breathe on us tonight. Thank you for letting us see Brother Tom and Sister Beth. What a blessing they've been through the years. Seeing Mama Henderson and our little sister Robin. God, would you meet with us now for a little while? We need your help. I thank you for it in Christ's name. All the Lord's people say it. Colossians chapter 2 verse 1. Paul said, if you just knew... What a great conflict I have for you. And for as many of them as are at Laodicea. All right, I done read the text. Y'all missed it. That's where I'm going to exhort from. What a great conflict I have for you. And for as many as are at Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh. I think I'll just obey the Lord tonight. We need him. 
He's a big old God. I thought of that. Are they praying? Are them boys praying back there? I thought a, I thought a deacon's meeting broke out on this back there. They're praying. Well, you know, the last time you went back there and prayed, what happened? Come out here and washed my feet. Started a 40 day, a 40 day season of prayer. Well, you'll have to give me a little volume then there, sound man. Them boys are praying. Ain't that good? Yes, sir. Brother Tom, I thought I'd tell you. Uh, thought I'd tell you about my kids being saved. Because you told me to tell you about it years ago. You said I'm praying for them. Tell me when. Tell me about it. <laughs> Lord, laid it on my heart to tell you about it tonight. And every, and all y'all can listen in while I tell Brother Tom. And I want to thank Brother Tom tonight, Brother Gillum. He's the one that uh, sent me to this place 19 years ago. We ought to say thank you while we got a chance. Are y'all with me on that? Why should I tell 10 men after church about it and not tell him during church? Why do I wait until we're in a funeral home somewhere and then tell people, that, tell them when you see them. Thank you, Brother Tom. <coughs> Introduced me. Sent me to this church 19 years ago. I just resigned my church in Florida. And in my 20s, I would go down to Cocoa, Florida. And uh, Brother Dana Williams and Tom Gillum would preach to me. And I was a pastor in my 20s. And those men taught me some of the ways of God taught me the ways of God. We ought to be thankful for the shepherds that God put in our life. And, and, and Brother Tom sent me over here. And so we're grateful. 19 years. I thought I'd split it more than three times. I'm a little disappointed to hear that. I... I Part contemporary some of those times maybe is what was wrong. But uh, I thought I'd tell Brother Tom about it and it might help some of y'all. I got three kids, Preston, he's 14, Chloe's 11, Kendall is 8, Sister Graham had been getting them little Christmas outfits for nearly 19 years. Well, since they, I know it. Mama Henderson makes them up a Christmas box every Christmas. We get it in the mail. And uh, them little old-fashioned toys are more fun than all the electronics in the world. Y'all hear me now? That's right, brother. Brother Tom, I think my oldest, my boy, he's a fatalist and my girl's an easy believer. <laughs> I got to tell you the story. And little Kendall... Uh, she's not saved yet unless she is. <laughs> what do you do when she's praying for her own self to be saved? That, <laughs> that's her, yeah, and she is precious. I had my kids not in my early 20s, but in my early 40s and 30s. You shouldn't have kids when you're in grandpa gear. They need a whipping, but I just give them a hug, you know. <laughs> I had some good child-rearing sermons on tape from my early 20s. <laughs> Before I was even married. And I still believe all that. I just don't have the energy for none of it. None of it. <laughs> so Kendall, when she gives a prayer request at the family altar... She prays for herself to be saved. She said, I pray for, y'all pray for me to be saved. <laughs> so
So I don't know. She may be more saved than all of us. And I've told them. I've not put a law on them. I've not put them under the law of man, but the law of the law of Christ. The law of love. However, and, and I couldn't explain that to you, but but I've told them. Let's. Uh, I've encouraged them, but not required them. You got to be careful when you make your kids be Christians and they're not even saved yet. Now that doesn't mean some of y'all worldly outfit let your youngins live like heathen. Probably, probably because you got sin in your life while you ain't dealing with the sin in their life. Talk to me. If you don't talk to me, I get hung up. Talk to me and I get distracted and move on. Huh? But you can't insert assert spiritual authority in your youngins' lives is because you're living in that sin and disobedience. Y'all talk to me. And uh, that's it. So I've encouraged them. I said, and especially my oldest, my boy, and I said, uh, you need to find your place, son, where you pray, where you read your Bible. I've only said it to him once or twice. And he'd been going every two for two years now. He'd go in his bedroom in the morning early, shut the door, 20 minutes. Nobody's made him. We don't ask him about it. But he's in there with A.W. Tozier. I have no idea where he got that little devotional book, but he got it, and he that's, I guess, out of my library. But I'm going to tell you how Preston got saved, and it's a funny story. I was up in Virginia, and uh, Stanton, Virginia, and the pastor's son got saved. Now, he's kind of buddies with our kids. His name's uh, Justin, and he got saved, and it was a pretty big deal around there. It was a high service. It was quite a hullabaloo and a kerfuffle when the boy got in. <laughs> His mama's from West Virginia. She shouted for 20 minutes. You hear me now? Not none of this little helium balloon, air-sucking, charismatic, limp-wristed, all these contemporary. Hold that a minute. I'm getting mad. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, leave Joel Osteen's church and find a church. Help me now. You swaying, charismatic women getting on my nerves with that sensual spirit you're bringing in the church. Boy, that hit us. <laughs> Thought you, I'll try it on this side. I, I thought with Mama Henderson on this side, that would have went better than it did. You charismatic women with your sensual spirit. But anyhow, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, she shouted all over. I have several disorders. I'm not going to medicate any of them. Mama was from West Virginia. Name's Georgia. That's pretty cool. From a good state with a good state's name. And Sister Georgia, she shouted for 20 minutes. Amen. Now see here, she wasn't raised in church. She was raised down there in the trailer park hanging on the side of a West Virginia mountain where everybody was high and everybody was going to hell. <laughs> and she got the goods when she got in. Mm, 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 mm. She shouted 20 minutes that night. <laughs> mm, I feel sorry for you if you go to a dead church where there ain't been no Holy Ghost shouting in a long time. You need to ask yourself why you're in a church that's got to make up stuff. You need to ask yourself why you're in a place where they got to make up everything in the world because they ain't had Jesus the good shepherd come walking through in a long time. Silly outfit. You let the contemporary movement come through, there ain't going to be a wooden pulpit. There will not be a red-faced preacher. There will not be a bloody altar. There won't be no Holy Ghost saints. Won't be no Holy Ghost shouting. Won't be a King James Bible left either. Won't be no Sunday night service. Won't be no Wednesday night service. There won't be nothing left in the church that makes church church. 
You'll have a little effeminate pastor, seven female co-pastors. You'll have a bunch of whoremongers and adulterers in there, hugged up on each other, swaying with their swaying with their sensual music. I know y'all don't have that problem, but if you know anybody that does, pass that on. Pass, <laughs> pass that on. She shouted 20 minutes that night. And so, uh, Brother Gillum, that's what I was going to tell you. Because you told me years ago when my babies were born, you were praying for my children, and I knew you meant it. And you said, tell me about it. <laughs> when they got saved. And I may have already told you, son, the last time I ran into you. We was in that Chevy pickup going back to the motel, riding through Stanton, Virginia. Is it Woodrow Wilson's got a presidential library there? And I uh, went by that library. And in the back seat, Preston and Chloe, he was only uh, eight and she was five. They got in their own little talk because Justin got saved and it stirred up something there in the truck, you know. And Preston spoke up out of nowhere. And he said, I got saved when I was six and a half. That's the first we'd heard of. <laughs> and, and I listened. And I said, oh yeah? Now he had told one of his aunts three months ago this. And she told us. Preston told me he got saved. So we was kind of excited. But I kind of want my youngins to have their own. You know, if your dad is a, is a, I'm trying to find the word. If your dad's an evangelist, if your dad's a well-used evangelist, there could be a lot of pressure on a kid, you know. And I didn't ever want to put no pressure on him. I wanted him and Jesus to have their own thing. Not, not, I didn't want to be in the way. I wanted to stay in the way. And let him find the way to the way. I didn't want him to have something that I gave him. And so even when Aunt Sherry told us, Preston told me he got saved. We didn't even ask him about it. You know, if you've got to give somebody's testimony for them, or if you've got to get them to give their testimony, they probably ain't got one. Y'all ain't helping me. If you got to tell it for them. And see, I wouldn't even tell this story if Preston was here. Because I'd be in his story. I want, I want him to have Jesus. So I just, but I couldn't help it. I said, yeah. I'm driving through Stanton doing 15 mile an hour. Is that right? You got saved in Alabama, son? Or he said, I got saved when I was six and a half in Alabama. I, I wanted to hear more since he brought it up. He said, yeah, I was over there in that church that night and God saved me. We live up near Tennessee. We live in Georgia. <laughs> we didn't know what he was talking about, but he knew what he was talking about. Well, Chloe didn't like it. It's because there's a firstborn and a secondborn, a boy and a girl. You don't know nothing about that, do you, Jerry? <laughs> Chloe didn't like it. She spoke up. Well, how do you know you got saved? <laughs> They're in the back seat. You know. she's, she's still in a car. You got to be in a car seat these days till you're 16. <laughs> Get your driver's license and you can come out of the car seat and go. But anyway, she's in her little car seat, five years old. He's a, she said, and, 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 you know, Y'all didn't tell me the girls were so much smarter than the boys. She said, I mean, you grow out of it. You grow into it. <laughs> Chloe, she didn't, it didn't sit well with her. She, she just retorted back to him. Well, how do you know you got saved? He said, God came over and saved me. She said, well, what prayer did you pray? He said, I didn't pray no prayer. God came and saved me. She said, you got to pray a prayer. 
She just didn't like the whole general evening the way it was going. I said, oh, Lord, my boy's a Calvinist and my girl's an easy believer. I don't know, top somewhere. I can pull them in the middle somewhere. That's, a, that's good enough. And uh, it was, uh, Brother Tom, it was David Phillips Church out of Ken Bowman's place. It was Amazing Grace Baptist Church in Weedowie, Alabama. And he got to explaining to us until we figured out which church. And then he told us, he, got, he said there was 23 other people got saved that night. Well, I was there. I was preaching the meeting. I didn't remember no night where 23 people got saved. So now not only is he a Calvinist, he's an evangelist. <laughs> you know, he's making up for the time. I don't know. But no, you know what it was? You know what it was? That night, and he told us, and he believed it. That night, because what he said was 21 or 23 people got saved with me too that night. And what it was that night. And he took us back later the next time we went to Amazing Grace, Mama Henderson. We went in the old building. He'd already come out of there. But he brought his little play camera that he'd got for Christmas. It actually takes pictures, but it was a play little plastic thing. But he'd brought it and packed it up for that little trip down there. He wanted to take a picture of the spot. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. And we'd had a, we had a tornado that night. He got saved in the church, a spiritual tornado. It was in that old, their old little building before they got their new auditorium. And he sat over there with his cousin who was traveling with us for a little bit. He knew right where he was sitting. He knew who was sitting beside him. And that night, the altar flooded. The moment God came, he just said, God, come over here and saved him. I'm leaving him alone. That's his. And what happened was, the altar flooded that moment. And when his little six and a half year old, he looked down through there and seen all them people. And he just thought God saved everybody. <laughs> the youth choir sang that night. And Mama Henderson, you've been in that church. These people don't know that church, but didn't have enough of a choir loft in that little old building they's in. And the youth choir got in the corner. And they were singing, he knows my name. And a tornado broke out. These men running. There were 40 men in that building. And there were so many, there wasn't a break in them. It was a continual procession running by you in that little, and it was a whirlwind. I'm going to say two things. I've never seen a woman run in a Holy Ghost meeting. Only men take off running. Nobody's ever told them to, to or not to. Running and taking them lap for the glory of God. Some of you ain't never seen that. We can't, you wouldn't understand it if we told you. You wouldn't understand it if you saw it. <laughs> they were running, tornado. And I've always seen them, they never go clockwise. I've been in this thing. I run, I run the Thursday night, last Thursday night, July 1982. At 2 a.m. I was running. That's the night God came and invaded me. I run that night. We had the service. We had a service from 7 to 9. The Holy Ghost started the service at 9 p.m. And it went to 3 a.m. And I found myself running that night, guess what? Going that way. And, and, and it's been years I've been watching. Then I've noticed it one time. Then I've always noticed it. I don't know. Now, probably tomorrow night, somebody will take off running that way. <laughs> it'll, mess, it'll mess it all up. <laughs> the other day, I was a preacher, and I said, I ain't never known anybody to get saved off of the Christmas play. I was going off on the month of December. <laughs> and the pastor, like, after the service, he said, uh, I got saved at a Christmas play. 
And he said, and my whole church knows it because I've told the story a hundred times. He said, that's why we were just smiling at you while you were in that. I'm like, okay, yeah, right, you messed me up on that. I wish you hadn't even told me. But they always go, it's a, now if you ever look in the whirlwind in your Bible, every time there's a whirlwind, it's God showing up in glory and somebody's usually getting raptured. Elijah, Ezekiel, Job, the Lord showed up in the whirlwind. Somebody's either getting caught up to heaven or heaven's catching up with them. <laughs> oh, y'all got to help me better than that. Then Elijah, them fiery chariots of horses, and they were swirling and whirling. Y'all talk to me. And he travels on the wings of the wind. <coughs> Anyhow, that night, Preston was sitting there. This is what the Lord told me to talk about. And that whirlwind broke out. Forty men, continual procession. There's so much glory in there. I mean, you need a see and eye dog. Just pick him up and hold him around. Let him do the looking for you. It was foggy. Mm. That choir was singing. My boy was sitting there by his cousin Kyle and that altar flooded. And God <laughs> came over there on top of him and saved him. Yes. That's his story. And he's sticking with it. He's 14. He ain't never wavered. He was only eight when he told us that. He said, I was six and a half. <laughs> God saved me in Alabama. And then Chloe got saved in Brother John Dorsey's church. I was gone preaching. That's where Mama and them was, Jennifer and them was taking the kids to church. And Brother Dorsey, he operates in the power of God too. And Jennifer looked down and Chloe was on the end of her pew on her knees. She prefers a prayer. <laughs> she. She's down on her knees, just a little, and tears just a coming. Her by herself. And uh, somebody showed Jennifer, had to show she did. And then a little bit, Jennifer went down there and she stood up and she said, and Jennifer, what she said? I got saved. <laughs> they called me and I got her on the phone. Her little voice, it was as pure as an angel's voice. I got saved. And Kendall, she's a prayer warrior. She just ain't saved yet. <laughs> I told them, find you a little place to pray, children. You need to do that. This is, that's, that's all the emphasis I put on it. I said, uh, children, y'all, all, every one of you, get your Bible. Y'all really need to make you a secret place. And that's about as far as I went, right there. And uh, she told me, well, she is the baby, and I am nearly 50. Oh, it's pitiful. <laughs> she said, Daddy, the other day, she said, uh, she said, I, and she's a talker. She talks. She's the most sanguine one. She talks. She says, I come in here between the bed and the window. She said, and I kneel in front of my window. She said, I pray here in front of this window is where I pray. I didn't ask her. She just was telling me about it. She said, I pray in front of the window. Got a little Daniel. Yeah. Got a little Daniel. <laughs> so I'm confused about her salvation. <laughs> She's in there praying for herself to be saved. <laughs> so we're just going with that. God gave us three acres in a house because I had some folks move in. We had a, a nice double wide. We were so proud of it. We loved it. Still would love it. But I had a man move in next door to me, married, uh, is on his fourth marriage. And, and, and 
from that wall to that wall. And this fourth woman that he married, she put on her bikini, two-piece bikini outside, and she had three boys. Brother Tom, I think Preston was four. She had three boys. They was from age seven to 12. They had long hair, cussing, heavy metal music. Dropped a little pool in. She walked around in her bikini all the time. Y'all do know that Christians put on clothes. Y'all do know that, right? Talk to me. So I'm wondering about why we, there must not be many Christians in our churches because half the women come in half naked. I understand a woman of the world and not knowing Maybe a woman that didn't have a godly mama not knowing. What's wrong with this nation? They're going to be mad when some man looks at them. Maybe that's why men are looking at men. Because the women are going naked and, and and, and mad when they look at them. Everybody's messed up. Talk to me. Y'all better talk to me. I said, Lord, my boy can't live here. We liked our little double wide. Looked out over a cow pasture in the North Georgia hill. I said, Lord, my boy can't. I ain't going to make him stay in the house. You're going to grow up looking at that woman and listening to them three boys and ain't no telling what kind of hell they would bring into his life. Right. Y'all do know that rock music and cussing and, and, and long rebellious hair on boys, y'all do know all that's from hell. Right. Y'all know that, don't you? I said, Lord, I can't let my boy... Went down to the bank. Somebody built a new house, had three. The only thing I wanted was for my kids to be able to go out in the backyard and hear the Holy Ghost. We got a beautiful three acres and a creek and no neighbors that you can see. Went down to the bank. I said, ma'am, I'm an evangelist without too many meetings. Figured I'd just tell it right. Did you know we got in on one of them loans that you wasn't supposed to get in on? I may have broke the economy there in the old. <laughs> they signed papers, all kind of papers. It's ridiculous what they gave us. I didn't have to do a damn payment. <clears throat> you know all them bad Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac things that crippled the nation. Thank God for old Fannie and Freddie. I got in on that. <laughs> Countrywide shoveled me right on through, honey. <laughs> Did you know we signed the papers on Tuesday? The market collapsed on Thursday. Right now, you know, the people trying to downplay Trump and talking about the housing market's fixing to collapse again. And they refer back to that housing market collapse. That's the one. On Friday, the woman said, Sir, I had 32 products available for you Monday. She said, and I'll never forget, you better be glad we signed yesterday. She said, because this morning I have one product available for you here in this bank loan department and you don't even qualify. She said, you got in, Brother Dean, she knew me, by the hair of your chinny chin chin. And she said, you may have been the last <laughs> bad mortgage <laughs> that broke the economy I said I've been preaching judgment coming to America anyway I bless God I'm glad the Lord used me now I don't know why I'm telling that but you better get some separation and sanctification on your home on your home I don't know why the Lord had me tell that a little salvation story about my children, a little separation story about my children. I got my boy away from them three monsters. And I pray for them three boys. I have compassion on them three boys. 
I pray God save them three boys, but I ain't, I ain't casting my son into the altar, the fire God of Moloch. Y'all was in San Antonio and I come out there, what, how many years ago was it? Forever ago. Yeah, 1994 and I preached in y'all's church in San Antonio. Because my daddy had been the pastor of old brother Paul. Paul. Yeah, I knew it was an Italian-Mexican name that was really weird. <laughs> He was a Mexican married an Italian and named Cassiano. I always thought that was cool right there. <laughs> they were some of our good friends. My daddy pastored old brother Cassiano and his family. My daddy walked across the yard. I was five years old. I don't know why I'm telling this stuff, Brother Bruce. I was five years old. Alicia was six. Daddy was pastoring in Missouri. They had a, I'm just going to say it, they had a pervert teaching certain classes that they just opened up in the public schools in America, okay? He's wearing white pants and doing, uh, he was teaching the kids. Things that a mom and daddy should only teach when they're older. Y'all do remember when all the perverts flooded our nation? About the time we voted prayer out and Bible out. Are y'all with me? Somebody called my daddy. The church was right across from the school. Somebody called my daddy. One of the other teachers in there, so alarmed at what this wicked man was doing in a classroom with a bunch of girls. Somebody called my daddy. One of the teachers preacher this man's over here such and such my daddy walked across the road now he was a redneck from north georgia can i get a witness right there deep shade of red we was in missouri this little german bunch of germans and dutch <laughs> they're all perfectionist you know the swiss precision honestly i have memories of them trimming their lawn with their scissors down on trimming them Daddy moved to town with six kids, five bird dogs, hung a Volkswagen from the tree. He's <laughs> trying to get something out of the motor. I had two deer hang. We didn't cut our grass. We, didn't, we killed our grass. We didn't have any grass. Bird dogs and kids. <laughs> the the parsonage wasn't big enough, so Dad jacked it up. <laughs> Jack this house up. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Move it over. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Dig a hole, dug a hole. Made a basement. Put it back. Now we doubled the living space. Put all the kids in the basement. That's where I grew up. <laughs> and we had a mountain. It was the only high place in the middle of Missouri. All the kids would come climb because the dirt <laughs> come out of that way. We get there. We had our own little mountain. That's the partial reason we didn't have a lawn. So, Daddy. Just an old saved country preacher. He walked across that road. Come over there and got me and got Alicia. Watch this. And he got all the church members' kids. Well, that's back when people followed the pastor. And by the way, them Germans and Dutch, them Missouri, them Missouri mules, show me state, stubborn state, they wasn't silly as southerners. They knew he had the authority. Took them all back to the church, put them in the basement, started teaching school. <laughs> Never quit. ACE gave him a, a trophy the other day for having a Christian school, something like 47 straight years. But when he walked across the road and got me and the rest of them and pulled us back to the church, he may have saved my life. <laughs> Y'all ain't helping me. That's right. He may have saved my life when he stuck me in the church basement. Yeah. And somebody just called all the parents. Hey, preacher's got all the kids in the church basement. Nobody was upset. Good. Started school the next morning. <laughs> With every one of them. 
He ended up being the Christian school state representative in the state of Missouri. Had a large annual gathering come in there. I'll tell you one more thing while I'm exhorting. Are y'all doing all right? Amen. See, Paul said in Colossians 2, he said, I'm in a real conflict for you. You live too close to Laodicea. And a bunch of you ain't never seen me. They'd never seen the apostle. All they had was secondhand stuff. I'm worried about a whole bunch of y'all in our churches in the South. I'm worried that you just got a secondhand thing and, and you live way too close to Laodicea. My daddy probably saved my life too when I was 13. <laughs> I'm almost done. We're going to pray. He had left Missouri. I was 13 now. And a church in Atlanta called him to pastor. He was right down the road from where Charles Stanley is now. It's on the north side of Atlanta. Sandy Springs, does that... That neighborhood, I believe that's the right neighborhood. Who's that Arabian guy, that Middle Eastern guy with the great big church? Pretty good preacher, he's on TV. Yosef Abedin, maybe. Joseph, yeah. Great big church if you ever come to the north side of Atlanta. We ride through there in Jennifer. She said, that ain't your church. <laughs> I said, it's just, I just don't want it. That's why. There's a little old church down by our house. It's a single wide trailer where they don't mow the grass and they put a steeple in front of it. The steeple sits in the yard. <laughs> and, and it's a little, we'll be riding by there and she'll say, that's your church. <laughs> I'll go by Joseph Yebedine's church. That ain't your church. She's mean like that to me. That church called Daddy, I, okay, that's 35 years ago. They had electronics in the pews, folks, and that's back when nobody had nothing fancy. They had hearing aids. This was rich people. Y'all hear me now? <laughs> Dad said growing up they was so poor that somebody broke in one night and they all got up and tried to help the old boy find something. <laughs> <laughs> and said they could find nothing to feed him. They told him where the neighbors was two miles down the next holler and told him how to get in. <laughs> I think that was a true story. <laughs> Never will forget, Brother Tom. They offered him a Cadillac. They showed us the mansion. The place had facilities just on top of facilities paid right between Charles Stanley and Joseph Ebedine's church. We was in a 1966 black Pontiac station wagon. It had a red spotlight on it. It was black. I mean, this car was so long. They had used it. They had got it for $600. They had used it to lead funeral processions. <laughs> and so all of us kids would sit in the back where many dead bodies had been before. <laughs> and then we'd have a lot of fun with that red spotlight at night. <laughs> yeah! I'd take me to Waffle House. For them stories. I, them are Waffle House stories. <laughs> and the car broke in half that night as we was trying to leave. It, the drive set literally. <laughs> trying to get on I-75. But, you know, when your car breaks in half, you may be poor. I just remember it going down a little bit. And all of a sudden, it was 4th of July everywhere. It's just, well, we were pretty excited. Ah, that's cool, Dad. Wow, let's do that some more. Wow, man, this is, this is a great night. Dad turned that church down. I never will forget. They wanted him. They wanted him pretty bad. All that day, we were big eyed. At the end of the day, Holy Ghost told Daddy, no. Daddy told him, no. And then we called him 30 minutes later. Uh, we're on the interstate. <laughs> 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 I 
our car broke in half. Maybe too many kids in the back. <laughs> they had to come help us out of there. <laughs> uh, you know, some things are humiliating. We kids were having fun, but I wonder if my dad told them no and then have to call him, hey, I couldn't get on the internet. We're stuck on the ramp. You know, one thing happened, old deacon. A lot of folks ain't going to go with God. They're not going to eat no humble pie. Here's what I want to tell you. A little church in Tennessee called him. They had a block building. It was unfinished. It was supposed to have been a gas station. Didn't have any windows or doors. And there's about 12 people over there. Humble, holy little bunch. He said the moonshine's been killing our kids and, the, and these old hillbillies through here. We need a church. And this time God said, go. And you know that's where God saved most of us youngins and where we got called to preach. And I've told 10 million kids how to get a pine tree and survive your teenage years, get your Bible in a pine tree and make a prayer closet. And I got to thinking, Brother Ken. I read a report, Brother Bruce, Brother Tom read a big report. That particular neighborhood, that particular neighborhood in Atlanta with all the rich kids said all the kids are dying of heroin. All the rich kids. It's an epidemic! Because they got the money to buy that kind of drugs. And they're close enough in Atlanta to get them. And the heroin, they said, it was an epidemic in that neighborhood. Holy Ghost crawled up on me and said, you need to thank your daddy. He turned the money down and he went to the wilderness. And when he done that, he took me away from drug needles and, and put me in pine needles. <laughs> put me in the pine needles. Guaranteed I'd been on them drugs. I had so much hell running through my bloodstream. I I hit a bad spell at 14 and 15. I nearly ruined everything, but I was so far out in the pine needles, I really couldn't get in trouble. I couldn't get away. Y'all ain't helping me. If I'd have been in that neighborhood, I'd have have got away within 10 feet. I'd have been 10 feet from access to hell's gate. I'd have probably been dead. <laughs> oh, thank God for some, some godly mamas and daddies that operate not on money, but on the will of God. You ever think about that? Make a choice off the will of God, not off dollar bills. Daddy took us to the pine needles and just had to get more 66 Pontiacs and keep them patched. He bought a house for $1,500. He'd been storing hay in it 15 years. It was a two-story thing. He jacked this house up and moved it five miles. We had to take down mailboxes and power lines in two counties. <laughs> he just had to know my dad. You need a house so we can get you out. You need more space, pick it up move it over. We'll make some more space. That thing actually was a beautiful mansion uh, uh, in years, a century ago. And now that house has been put in magazines. They got inside and got to stripping everything, individual tin shingles. Dad put all of us boys in the attic and told us it was the most awesome bedroom anybody had ever had. You sit up out of bed and hit your head on the the (laughs) A-frame. All four of us boys. But when it rained, Snuggled up in that bed, and that raindrop, big old fat summer raindrop, started hitting them ten shingles right next to your head. Oh, honey, George Jones ain't never sang that pretty. <laughs> he come close, but he ain't done it. Not. When he stopped loving her today, I did too. I was heartbroke for a month. I never even knew the woman. I cried for a month. You know it? But that rain had hit that tin roof. 
I tried to get away. I had my two years of running, and I couldn't. I was so far out in the pine fields, and there's so many of God's people around me. Mm. Y'all sang that tonight. Hank Little sang that when I was 16 years old. It's a great old Southern Baptist conference. Old Erwin Kreider, Rocky Face Bible Conference. Ed Blue was on the floor kicking. Them old Cherokee horse teeth, large, one tooth alone could eat a buffet by itself. He's on the floor kicking that old Cherokee Indian saved. Power of God was in that place. I was 16. Ed Blue was laid out on the floor. J.R. Smith was standing up in a bench. Reuben Field, old black preacher from Indianapolis, Indiana, dead and gone now, originally from Louisiana. He was over there waving like this, shouting. He was a, looked like a 400-pound man. And Hinkle Little was walking the benches, literally. And he sang that that morning. Father on Still go farther. Can't you reminded me of it when you when y'all sang one of them? Count the milestones one by one. Jesus will. I don't need the words. I just think it is better farther on. Having a little church over there a while ago, and he was, was he sang it that morning, and I got right. Yeah. Yeah. Daddy had me in the pine needles. By the grace of God, I've never touched a cigarette or a dope, never touched alcohol. But y'all find it interesting that right now in America, you think the Lord's getting ready for the second coming. <laughs> Recognize Jerusalem as the capital. You ever say their names together? Brother Tom, you ever put their names together? Trump Pence? I like it. If I find a verse to go along with it, I'll stick it in there. Trump Pence. Do y'all find it interesting that neither Trump nor Pence have ever touched a drop of liquor in their life? That's interesting. They're both teetotalers. Neither one of them's ever touched a cigarette. I don't know if Trump's saved or not. I, I got, if I had 30 minutes, I'd tell you what I think about what's happened. When he accepted Israel, and when he accepted Pence, the only real Christian up there, there may be two or three more. When he laid his hands on Pence, when he laid his hands on Jerusalem, Something strange may have happened in the heart of the king. <laughs> Take me to Waffle House, I'll explain my position to you. I'm afraid to say it in front of Baptists. Mm. Hank O'Little was walking them benches. Come here, Jared, and stand with me again. I'm so proud. Ain't you proud of him, Brother Tom? How he's turned out, how he's doing. Amen. Picking up the mantle like an old man of God. Amen. Youngins, there's something to you being pure. Some of you, some of you youngins might better you might better do like Daniel. You better purpose some things in your heart. I know God forgives. I know God restores. I know. I also know a lot of people go out yonder and they never get to come back. Yes. Yes. And a lot of them, when they come back, they, there's things they bring back that they wish they would. Yes. Oh, Brother Hinkle walked, walked the benches that morning. He is singing. One day as I was thinking on unseen things above, the Holy Ghost descended and he filled me with his love. 
I'm going to die on this battlefield. I'm going to die in this war. I want to die on this battlefield with glory in my soul. They said Hinkle Little went to the Pacific Garden Rescue Mission in Chicago years earlier in his ministry and picked up that song. Brought it back to the south. I want you and you and the daughter to go back up there and start singing that. Sing that farther on. Come on back up and start singing. At my grave, oh, still be singing. Though you weep for those who I want y'all to get somebody and pray with them tonight. If you want to, get somebody and bring them to the altar and let's pray for revival. Pray for our lost loved ones. Let's pray for our churches. Let's pray for our children. Let's pray for the preachers. Let's pray for our nation. Let's pray for our generation. Let's pray for our assemblies and our meetings that God would send his power. Y'all help them sing. Count the milestones one by one. Jesus will Yes.
Sing another verse of it. As we travel, y'all help her sing. Help them sing, church. <laughs> I love you. thing on my heart before I'm done with my part. Why don't we sit here? Let Mama Henderson and Sister Robin just sit right there. And let them sing something to us. Is that all right, Pastor? Yes, sir.
Sister, sing me one more. <laughs> sing me one more. It ain't time to shut her down yet. Can you sing me one more? Lord, we thank you, Father, for how good you've been. Father, we praise your holy name tonight. Father, thank you for making yourself at home here tonight. Father, thank you for making your presence known unto your people. Father, we praise your holy name for how good you've already been. Father, we thank you, God, for what you've already done. God, you've been amazing to these sinners here tonight inside of this sanctuary. Father, thank you for inclining your heart to us. Thank you for letting us experience you. Father, we praise you for how wonderful you've been. God, we ask that you'd forgive us for how rotten we've been. God, we meet here tonight as unclean people. And God, you chose to meet with these rotten sinners just as they were. God, you know how dirty and unclean we are, and yet you still chose to come and meet up off of Behringer Street. Amen. Father, you could have been anywhere tonight, but you decided to show up here. God, you could have blessed anywhere tonight, God, but I thank you for stopping by this little church on the hill. God, forgive us where we failed you. Father, as we go through the rest of this week, as we go through this time, would you allow us to keep you at the center? 
Would you allow us to just honor and glorify you to the best of our ability? Would you allow us just to lift up the name of Jesus Christ as great as we know how? Father, would you allow us just to approach the throne of grace boldly and come before you with presence of thanksgiving and enter into your courts with praise, Father. Let us just make glad unto you your holy name. God, I ask that you take this meeting, this jubilee that we've entered in, Father. May we experience the true spirit of jubilee. May we experience being set free this week, Father. May we experience the freedom of being inside of Christ, Father. May we experience the true worship that you offer. God, we thank you for what you've done. God, we're just willing vessels to do whatever you'll have us to do. Father, we yield ourselves completely to your power. God, would you take this church, would you take these people, would you take those who are going to be gathered here throughout the rest of the week, and God, if it be your will, would you let us start the fire that you're about to light? And God, we thank you for it. We're going to ask all of these things in your precious and holy and wonderful and magnificent Son, Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank y'all for coming tonight to Canaan Baptist Church. If y'all are members here, make sure that you tell all the visitors welcome. And uh, make sure that you guys make it back tomorrow night for Dr. Joe. Tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock with Brother Tom Gill and Brother Mike Bagwell and the Henderson girls. They'll be with us again. Absolutely. If you're a member here, you got some stuff in your pew. Uh, there will be many visitors attending the next couple days. If you can make sure that you try and clear out some of your stuff, we'd appreciate it. Thank you all. Y'all be careful. Have a good night. John chapter number 11. Read it for Brother Mike Bagwell. John chapter number 11.